Hi, this is David. Today we're talking about the Sentiment Analysis Cognitive Service, which allows you to take a, a piece of text and determine whether it's generally a positive bit of text or generally a negative sentiment in that bit of text. Now we can do, do that by logging into our Azure portal and creating a resource called Cognitive Services, like so. And right here, and I'll give it, I'll call this one DG Test uh, Sentiment. And I'll put it in about uh, East US. Take that pricing tier. I'm going to create a resource group for this called DG Test Cog Services RG. I always name my stuff in Azure DG Test if it's for a demo. And I confirm that I read whatever it says down there, and I click on Create. It just takes a few seconds to create that. But while I'm there, I want to open up. I actually want to go to Microsoft.com/cognitive. That's what I always remember. It redirects me to the right place, right here. This shows me all the cognitive services. I'm really interested in the language category here, and under Text Analytics right here. If I look at this API, actually, if I look at this. This demo right here, I can see things like this text. I had a wonderful trip to Seattle last week, and even the visit the Space Needle two times right here. I click on Analyze right there. It calls that web service and returns this JSON right here. And you can see that the important part of this is there's an array of documents. I've only passed it in one document, and it has a score, 83.72%, percent point eight three seven two. Um, and there's some other information in here as well, like the key phrases, and the language and so on. And what they've done here is actually written a bit of JavaScript to parse out that JSON and display it. So the language is English. Here's some key phrases. The synonym was 83.75 or 84%. They rounded up there and drew this little graphic here and so on. So they've actually parsed out all the stuff in here and displayed it. So this happens to be a, an 84% positive statement. I had a wonderful trip to Seattle last week. And even this is basically two times. Yeah, that's, that's pretty positive. Here's a... Uh, uh, negative thing. Unfortunately, it rained during my entire trip to Seattle. I didn't even get to visit the Space Needle. And if we look at the... I don't have to click the button here. It automatically sent call that service, returned this JSON, and for the sentiment, we're talking about this right here. The score for the only document in here is 0 .0364, which is about uh, uh, 4%, right there, 4%. So that's generally a negative thing. So the idea behind the sentiment is that the so you get a score between 0 and 1. The closer to 1, the more positive the sentiment. The closer to 0, the more negative the sentiment. Let's take a look at how that works. We'll click on the API right here. And in here, you can see that I'm going to send a request for, right here, for the sentiment. I'm going to send a request to a URL. Looks kind of like this. HTTPS colon whack whack some endpoint which depends upon where I've created it. And I created this thing right here. So if I go to it, I'll see that my endpoint is up here in overview. There's my endpoint, eastus.api.cognitive, blah, 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 right there. And, um, and it'd be different if I had selected some other region besides East US. Slash text, slash 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 v2o, slash sentiment, Question mark show stats and show stats is a boolean. Question mark show stats equals true or false, and it's optional. Um, if you set it to true, then it'll return uh, some document loss, extra statistics. If I want that, in the header of that request, I'm going to specify the OCP APIM subscription key, and that comes from the service I just created down here under keys. You'll see this key right here. And there's actually two of them. You can use either one. They're just there just in case one gets compromised. Now, yeah, this has already been compromised. You see on the video, but by the time I publish that, I'll delete this service. So it won't really do you any good. And, um, and then this content type. And the content type says the media of the body sent to the API. And my options are it can be as passive as application slash JSON, in which case I would pass in something that looked like this or text slash JSON, in which I would pass in something that looks like this. Either one of those are, are an option here. And they look pretty similar. Um, just the schema looks like the schema is slightly different for these two things. 
Now, uh, what's returned? Well, if everything goes well, then I'll get a 200 response, an HTV 200. That's the, that's the OK response. And I'll get something like this back, or I'll get something like this back, depending on what I, what I passed in. So that this will determine um, whether I, uh, yeah, how, how do I want to, the response to come back. Um, or I could get an error. If I get a 500 back, that means something went wrong. Uh, you'll get some information. The, the, the documentation doesn't show you much, but you'll get some information about why the error occurred. You may get a response that's uh, 400, and there are things like maybe I put the key in wrong, or maybe I got the URL wrong, or something like that. Maybe I have some malformed JSON. That would be bad. So there's a documentation of the API. Uh, down here we actually have some code, some sample code. If I want to do this in curl, I could do it just like this. Now I'd have to change some of these things. For example, I created mine in East US, so I'd have to change that endpoint to East US .API blah blah blah, and show stats equals. That's a placeholder. I put true or false in there, and then in the header I put application JSON and this. So I could copy and paste this, but I do have to replace like the subscription key from here, and uh, and then something in the body right there. So um, that's C, that's curl. Uh, here's some C sharp code. Here's some Java code. So even if you haven't worked in these languages before, you've got some sample code to start with right here for Ruby, Python, etc. Even different versions of Python are shown right here, 2.7 and 3.2. Now, if I want to actually see this in the browser, I could actually do this. Click on East US. That's where I've created my service. And then here, I want to say show stats. Let's say true. Why not? And uh, content type, that's fine, application JSON. My key, let me grab that out of here. This icon will copy it to my clipboard. And then I can paste it into here. And here's the uh, body here. It looks like I'm passing in several documents, one, two, and three. Hello world, this is some input that I love. Bonjour tout le monde, some French. La carretera estaba hasta, I don't know what that says, but it looks like it's Spanish to me. There's the body, and here's the actual request I'm going to send. I am going to send post to, what is it? It's a post to this URL right here. Here it is, a post to that URL. And in the header, I'll have content type, application JSON, the key, which they've masked right here, but too late, you've already seen it, and in the body, all of this JSON right here. Let me go ahead and click Send, and then it'll actually call that web service. It came back really fast. I got a 200 OK back came back in about uh, 0.1, 150 milliseconds, so 0.15 seconds. And here's what I got back. For the three documents, one, two, and three, I got no errors down here. And I got uh, some things like a score of 98%, score of 84%, a score of 33%. And if I look at that, hello world is some input text. I guess that's pretty positive. Bonjour tout le monde, hello world, and... I'm guessing that also says hello world. I don't really speak uh, Spanish well enough to know that, but it's uh, you know, it actually says something negative. It's only 33%. We could tell that. And some information about the character count in here as well. Uh, all right, so uh, in this video, I've shown you the basics of how to call the, the sentiment analysis of Text Analytics API, which is a cognitive service, and what the syntax is and how to do this within the browser. In the next video, I'll show you some actual code to do that. This is David. Thank you for watching.